This is the Louis T. Network. Man, I love some football. Man, I love some football. My favorite week is week one, because I'm watching football. First comes the preseason, now I don't take a day off. And then it gets even better when your team makes the playoffs. 32 teams go hard for one thing. They work for one thing. That Super Bowl ring. 32 teams go hard for one thing. They work for one thing. That Super Bowl ring. program week one national football league here to break down the jacksonville jaguars traveling out to philadelphia to take on the eagles and this was one of those games that got off to a rousing start and had a lot of people around the league scratching their little skulls asking what's going on out there what the hell is going on out there nobody really knew unless you were watching the game and so i wanted to see how this game went from 17-0 Jacksonville to a 34-17 Philadelphia Eagles win. So, let's talk about this game. Jacksonville came out inspired. And this is the thing that was the most disappointing to me about the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's talk about how this game started. Jacksonville got off to a very fast start. And they started it with the defense. And that's the thing that you expect from Jacksonville with Gus Bradley as their head coach. A defensive-minded guy coming over from Seattle. He's bringing all these pieces over and he's kind of constructing this defense into the mold of the Seattle Seahawks. And so you're expecting them to be a little bit more aggressive defensively, get after the other team's quarterback. And that's what they did in this game, sacking Nicholas Foles and stripping him of the football twice and forcing another turnover via interception early in this game, having those turnovers turn into points. And I must say, watching this game and seeing Hearns, Alan Hearns, a guy that you got as an undrafted rookie free agent out of the U, come in and perform the way he did. And, and look, I watched him in the preseason. I said, they may have something here. But I wasn't sure. I felt like if Cecil Shorts the third comes back, and Allen Robinson comes back and, you know, of course, you drafted Lee as well. These guys are going to get the bulk of the snaps. He's not going to be able to see the field. So I really didn't know what to expect from Allen Hearns, but to see him play the way that he did early in this game, have the, the big balls and the touchdowns, two touchdowns early on in this game, another deep ball deep in Philadelphia, or excuse me, deep in your own territory, literally backs. To the shadow of your own end zone and for Henny to drop back and throw a beautiful deep ball to Allen Hearns. This kid was over 100 yards receiving in the first quarter and this Jacksonville Jaguars defense was all over the Philadelphia Eagles offense. And so before you blinked, it was 17 to nothing and this Jacksonville Jaguars team had come into Philadelphia and really put the Eagles on notice. I mean, everybody was looking around like, is that the right score? I mean, I know I wasn't watching the game, but I'm watching another game. I'm watching another two games, and I'm saying to myself, is that the right score? Did they make a mistake? And to watch the game and see the way that it unfolded, it was impressive by Jacksonville. It was impressive. And this was the thing I talked about with the Eagles in the preseason, that Nicholas Foles cannot, you can't think that he's going to repeat the success that he had last season. And that's the thing that alarms me about the Philadelphia Eagles is that you know 
that he can still, I think he can play at a high level. I don't think that he's just going to fall off the table necessarily, but 27 and 2 won't be duplicated. And, and you have to know that. Now, just knowing that he only turned it over a whole entire three times, that's it. One fumble, two interceptions last year. That's all he did in the form of turnovers last year. You had to know that was going to change. Now, did you expect it to change in the first 15 minutes of a ball game? No, you didn't expect that. And so the Eagles got off to a very, they were shell-shocked is what they were. I mean, Jacksonville jumped them. Before they could blink, they were down by three scores in this game. And all of a sudden, you've got to get your wits about yourself. And, and this is when your championship medal is tested. And the Eagles, they rose to the occasion now. They didn't rise to the occasion without help. Jacksonville, and this is, all right, now let, let me talk about what I wanted to talk about earlier. This is where Jacksonville frustrated me because if, you're, if you want people to take you seriously, if you want to show people that you're turning the corner, you get a 17-point lead, I need you to find a way to win that game. And you had ample opportunities to step on the necks, on the throats of the Philadelphia Eagles in this game, and you just failed to take advantage of them. One being a missed field goal by Josh Scobie. Normally reliable, he actually missed a field goal. Then you get another opportunity to make a field goal, and it's blocked. That's six points off the scoreboard. That could have changed the complexity of the game tremendously. Instead, it's still 17 to nothing. The Eagles still can see you. Even though you've got them in the rearview mirror and, and they're fading fast, they still can see you. Those field goals might have put them out of their misery. Instead, you leave them in the ball game and you gave up big plays. You played so well defensively to see them score, not by 12 play, 84 yard drives, not by them meticulously matriculating the football down the field. You gave up big plays. You gave up a huge run in the, in the running game to Mighty Mike, Darren Sproles. That allows them to get on the board for the first time in the game. Then you have defensive breakdown after defensive breakdown. Guys are running wide open, including Jeremy Macklin in your secondary. Nobody even around this guy. To me, those can't happen. Those defensive breakdowns can't happen, especially when you're nursing a lead, especially when the game is tied. And so you've got to know that once the Eagles got on the board, once the Eagles scored again and cut this thing to 14 to 17, once the Eagles tied it up, the Jacksonville Jaguars, the entire time this was going on, they were saying to themselves, uh-oh, here we go again. And that's where you, you've got to break this vicious cycle. And this was an opportunity to do that. To, to, to see the Eagles come back, catch you, and then double you up is very disheartening. Not, not only did they come back and beat you, they came back and they, they left you at 17. You picked the number 17. You said, hmm, let me get comfortable. You said, oh, but it, it has to be the right number. Hmm, let me see. I don't like 16 that much. 18 is a funny number. I don't, I don't do 18s. Uh, I could do 20. I don't want to do 20. 17 is a great number. Let's go with 17. You picked 17 and you got comfortable. Ah, this is the life. And you didn't score any more points. Guess what? The game isn't over after you get to 17, Jacksonville. And the Eagles not only caught you, they doubled you up. They doubled you up. And they beat you 34 to 17. Now, the score kind of is it, it, skewed because they get a late fumble, scoop it up, score at the end of the game, make it look like it was much worse than it really was. But this game was close for the most part. They scored two touchdowns in the last three minutes of the game to really make it look like it was out of hand. But just know this. You had opportunities in this game. You squandered them. You got off to a wonderful start and you blew it. If you're the Jacksonville Jaguars, you need to build off of what you did early in this game to build a 17-point lead. And you need to make sure that you do not repeat the mistakes that saw you blow this 17-point lead and then get blown out by 17 points. If you're the Philadelphia Eagles, that's a sloppy way to start. But again, it's okay because you were able to rally and get it done. You're not going to win pretty every Sunday. It's not going to happen the way you draw it up. You can sit down and come up with a game plan on how to win, and then you get into the game, and just like you did, you got punched in the face the first five minutes of the game, and that playbook and that game plan went out of the window, and you just had to play off of instincts, and you got it done. 
And that's what champions do. That was a huge win. You could have easily folded under this pressure, but you did it. You came back and you got it done. But I must say, you're not going to play the Jacksonville Jaguars every week. You cannot turn the football over the way that you did. You cannot have the mistakes that you had. On defense, you had some defensive breakdowns. Allen Hearns was killing you. And you've got to be a much better football team if you're going to do what you did last year, which is win the NFC East. Not that this is a strong division, but you're still going to have to fight for this division and you're going to have to play much better. Because, again, you play a tough schedule. You got a first place schedule. We played the NFC West this year, and you got to play the division. And you know those games are always tough. So you've got to play better than you did in the first quarter. But you were able to weather the storm, and you get it done 34 17. Big win for the Philadelphia Eagles. Another question now comes how is that offensive line looking after this game? Two of your offensive linemen left this game, did not return, and you still got Lane Johnson sitting out a four-game suspension. So that could be the bigger question leaving this game, is how are you going to be able to fare on the offensive line moving forward? How severe are those injuries to those linemen that left the game, and are they going to be able to come back and help you win? Because, again, the offensive line is going to be key. Nicholas Foles isn't running anywhere. He's not running anywhere. So you've got to be able to protect him and give him an opportunity to throw the football down the field like he did against the Jacksonville Jaguars on Sunday. And that's going to do it for this breakdown of the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are now 0-1, and the Philadelphia Eagles, who are now 1-0 and in the season. Come back and join me because i got many, many more games to break down. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab room. I thank you for joining me. Come back and join me as I continue to break down week number one in the National Football League.